such a sweet aroma feel my life. Oh, oh, so share and show me how to grow and be seen God's eyes. There is a scene thousand Make me a reflection in your light And I pray they star shine down on me Let your love shine through me in the night just good to be in Doosan and I, I had to look at that on the map and I, I finally as we pulled up um, I love a GPS and uh, we we got here and uh, we left uh, 
uh, over at First Baptist in Lafayette this morning, and um, we had to find a Walmart. You know, we had to go by Walmart to get to anywhere. And, and uh, yeah, I'm like, why? Except to get some food. That was <laughs> the main thing. And and so we we went by there, and then so I punched it in to to get over here. And of course, it carries you the furthest way, I think, down a two-lane road, low limbs and all that. But it was good we got here, and it's just beautiful to be here and to to, to worship together with you tonight. And uh, I want to introduce uh, our group to you so you'll know who we are, and then we'll get back to it. Uh, the young man that's back in the back taking care of our sound and video, he's been with us about a year and a half now. He's originally from Queen City, Texas, which is over close to Texacana, Texas. And he's been with us for a year and a half. He takes care of the video and the sound and uh, does a, a lot of stuff for us in that area. And uh, he's 20 years old. Would you make Mr. Stephen Hayes welcome tonight? And um, we have a tenor singer, and, and he plays the bass, but he is homesick. And uh, he wasn't able to make this trip with us. And uh, so I've been on the phone with him today trying to figure out if he's going to try to catch up with us to finish out the rest of the We've still got about, I think, 14 days on the road, and so uh, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen there. But his name is Steve Reeves. He's, uh, he sings our tenor and plays the bass when he's with us. And so uh, y'all pray for him that God will continue to heal him. But um, the young man that sings our lead and he plays the, the guitar, he's going to do a, li a little of that here in just a few moments. And, uh, but uh, he writes songs, and I have known him all of his life. And uh, he's, uh, he's my son. He's 18 years old. And would you make Jonathan Talley welcome tonight? And sitting on the front row up here, she has been the love of my life for the last 30 years. And she's been everywhere I've been. And uh, she's always there on that front row or close to it. And uh, she's our administrator. She takes care of bookings and helps in that area, the Facebook if you go to Facebook and you find the Crusaders, you'll find on her page that she posts so much about the ministry and what's going on there. And would you make my wife, Penny Talley, welcome? My name is David Talley, and we make up the Crusaders, and we're just honored to be with you. We pray that tonight, through the songs, maybe through testimony or through the, the preaching of the Word, that you'll glean something from the Lord. And if you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray before this service is even over with that you will call on him, confess your sins, and ask him to save you. And he'll do just that. Listen to the message of this song that says, One day he stood in for you. He stood in and he took all of your sin. As you and I stood guilty before an almighty judge, one day mercy walked in. And he 
that old cross where the dearest stand best for a world of lost sinners was about the cross why I did some study on a cross that the Romans used in the crucifixions and I found out some things first of all that the cross piece that they strapped to a person's back that was being crucified weighed anywhere from 75 pounds to 125 pounds and they were to bear that cross and when they bore that cross, as they walked up the Via Della Rosa to get to Calvary, to Golgotha, they would tie this big wooden cross tie to them, and they would balance it on their neck, and they would have to carry that. And when I walked in today, I was reminded as I saw the spikes and the crown of thorns right here on the communion table. And I studied where they would drive those spikes. See, the Romans were perfectionists at what they did. They were experts in torture. They knew how to get the most bang for the buck. They knew where to place those between certain bones to cause small amounts of bleeding, not excessive. 
So when they would attach the cross piece to the upright, my friend, it was no gentle procedure. Along with everything that our Lord suffered for us, and as we were looking at the spikes, Jonathan, he reached in to get one of them, and that thorn stuck him. Can you imagine the agony of just the crown of thorns drove on his head? My friend, we don't understand love like the love that Jesus has for us. See, we don't, we don't understand why he would even want to do that. But my friend, do you understand that he is king of kings, lord of lords, and there is no other but him? And he came and gave himself. Now get a load of this. He knew, he knew that it was going to take a perfect lamb. And he decided to bear all of mine and your sin and to take on this load and suffer for you and I. You know, the Bible says that he was given a name above all names. In Ephesians 2 in verse 9, the Bible says that he was exalted and given a name above all names that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and below. I want to tell you, he's worthy of praise. He's worthy of our reverence. He's worthy to serve him in whatever capacity you can, to give him your all because he gave his all. This summer, we were on our way back from West Virginia. And the Lord gave Jehonathan this song. And I love the message of this song. It says his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. One who died. He saved my life, and he gave me signs, and he's coming back one day when that trumpet will blow. This man who I will save your life and he will call you home. You may have problems that you don't understand, but just come on. He'll come the storm with his hand and just fall on your face yeah, cry out to him to help you through this man who died will save your life and be right there
Yeah. 
Jesus, your name is power. Bread of living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. praise tonight. Amen. 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 You may be seated if you desire. Oh, I, I, I love praises. I love to sing about my Lord. I love to worship my Lord. There's nothing like feeling the presence of an almighty God. I recall a few months ago we were in uh, Muskogee, Oklahoma, at a, it's a halfway house. We do a lot of stuff in prisons and homeless shelters and halfway houses, and we love to minister to people. And uh, we were at Ray's house is what it's called, and he is such a dear friend. Uh, God, man, delivered this man. This man is a big old man. I mean, he is a uh, big old oaky, and I mean, he's just much of a man. And he, uh, God saved him. I'm talking about just, as a friend of ours said, he got bone saved. He and all the way through and man he loves the Lord and he loves to help people and he, him and his wife on their own set out and started taking folks in and rehabilitating them through the love of Jesus Christ and watching God change their life they get saved then all of a sudden you see a change in their life and it's just an amazing place and, and we were there do, doing a revival for a few nights and I'll never forget the day we were getting ready to leave. We were up there at the chapel and um, had actually been doing some recording there. And uh, and he came in and he had to run some errands. And you just have to know Ray. You would always know where Ray was at. And uh, it's just the neatest thing. Uh, the men that are there and, and, and the Hades, when they hear, Jesus! they would answer back they'd be in Walmart and you'd hear it come across they'd know it and I want to tell you brother Ray he's all about the Lord and uh, man that afternoon he come in to pray with us and me and Jonathan and Stephen and Steve was there and I know it must have been it seemed like it was only a minute or so but it was about 45 minutes begin to pray and just the presence of God just to begin and this man's big old hands he would grab them just like this and start shaking and it would well up in him 
and he's crying and praising the Lord and then that head would go back and he would just cry out that precious name of Jesus my friends sometimes that's what we've just got to do is cry out to the Lord because we hold it in and we think we've got it all together we want to look good on the outside that we've got everything that we come to church and everything's good but my friends sometimes we just need to cry out to an almighty God and say God I'm nothing without you and I believe when brother Ray cries out to that he's crying out in praise saying thank you Lord for saving an old sinner like me I want to tell you he is so worthy I love that Revelation song because I want to tell you you can turn over into the book of Revelations and you can find where that song was took from. And back in November, I was doing a revival and the Lord put on my heart about just how awesome and how great our God is. And I began to read and begin to look at Revelations and where it talks about the throne. You know, we, we picture the throne as just maybe a small thing. But when you go in and you start examining how big that the four beasts that constantly go around the Lord crying, Holy, Holy, Holy. And when they make a circle and they cry, then the, the, the 20 and four elders fall on their face in worship. And they've got also thrones. So, and they're around God's throne. My friend, can you imagine how big the throne room is going to be in heaven? See, sometimes we get this little picture uh, of God being, if you will, just a little man like you and I. But my friend, our God is great. Our God is so great. But listen to me. He's so great, but yet he even knows the hair on your head. He knows everything about you my friend that's the love that our God has for us I was reading in Amos this morning and, and God was so he was so mad at the Israelites and, 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 and he was he just had it all enough you know it's kind of like when Dad, daddy says I've had it up to here that's it that's the way God had done become with the Israelites but you can read a little further and you'll find the love that he has for us even though he chastens us hey and when he chastens us man that's a good sign right there amen because he chastens his own see if he wasn't his own he wouldn't do that but my friend our Lord is so worthy I don't understand his grace and his mercy I, I really don't I just accept it and when I, when I think about the grace of our Lord, when I begin to even think about at the age of nine when I knelt beside my bed at, during vacation Bible school one night and asked the Lord to save me at the age of nine, man, I realized that I needed a Savior because I had lied to my mom and told her I took the trash out before we went to church, and I didn't. And you might say, well, that's just the craziest thing you've ever heard. Well, sin is sin. And when I had lied to my mom and knew it, that's when the Lord said, you need me. Because if you don't have me, you're going to die and go to the devil's hell. Because I'd heard that big preacher, and that pulpit must have been at least seven foot tall, and he was nine foot when he preached. And he'd take that old fist back then. This was in the 60s and early 70s, and they would hit that pulpit, and I'm talking about it would thunder. And they would slam that, and he'd say Without Jesus, you're going to, boom, die and go to hell. And I knew, man, if it, it was that bad because he'd hit that pulpit, I didn't want to go there. And I knew I needed a Savior. And I asked the Lord at the age of nine to come into my life and save me. And the cool thing is, he did. He did. Now, you say, well, how do you know, the Bible says you'll know them by the fruit they bear and that there's a turn. Well, even at the age of nine, things change. See, I'm, I'm glad that God's not a respecter of ages. Amen? He said, whosoever will may come. So there's not a criteria on, on salvation except to accept him 
as Lord and Savior to ask him to forgive you of your sins and recognize that he is King of Kings and he died and rose again. And he said he'll do that. His grace and His mercy. It just amazes me. Listen to the message of this song.
You know, I, I think about that word grace and the Father's grace. I was so blown away when Brother Toby began to tell me about what goes on with the, the kids and what they do here. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. See, I've been to some churches that um, were trying to get rid of the youth because it cost too much. Well, you know they'll go in there and they'll mess up the paint on the wall. You know, and they, they won't sit still during church. Praise God, I'd rather have them in here bouncing off the wall than I had out on the street somewhere. And then it's though that other that says, well, I'd go get them, but I just don't have the money to. Well, who owns the cattle on a thousand hills? He can put the gas in your tank. Who knows, you might be picking up the next Billy Graham. You might be helping the next Lottie Moon. You might be helping the next person that might save your son. You see, we can, we can get down to as they used to say, brass tacks about this thing. God has a purpose in your life. And he loves you because we've done sung about that tonight, the evidence of his love, and that's the cross. That's the cross of what he did for you and I. And throughout the whole night, it's, it's really neat to see what God does because up until about 15 minutes before we came in here, I had no idea what I was going to preach on. But that's usually the way the Lord does it with me. He, you know, I, I get fidgety and I begin to think in my mind what I want to do. And then he said, no, this is what you're going to do. And I go back and think about almost every song because we don't have a list of songs that we, we just go as the Spirit leads. And every one of them has talked about the love of God. Talks about being obedient to what God wants us to do. You see, sometimes in our lives... Um, we decide to take it on our own hands. We're going to handle everything. Anybody here ever been there? Decided you want to fix it yourself? I want to tell you, it doesn't work, does it? We try to, we think, uh, especially us dads. Us dads, we've got it all under control, and we can take care of it. And we can make things happen because we're a dad. Bull. Bull. We can try, but we usually fall on our face. And that's usually where we need to be, amen? We need to be on our face before God saying, Lord, I need you. And a lot of times as we begin to, to drift out, we cause someone else to drift. And Brother Steve talks about, that sings with us, shares his testimony, he was addicted to pornography. And he shares that he thought he was only hurting himself. But he realized he was hurting a lot more. Because his wife and his kids had found out what he was doing on that computer. See, because when you begin to fall away from God, you're going to affect somebody else. But I want to talk to you more about love tonight. I want to talk to you about a father that loves. You see, my daddy used to say when I was growing up, and he's, he still says it, uh, he'd say, one of these days you'll understand what I'm telling you. Well, you know, especially as a teenage boy, when he says, uh, okay, you need to be home at 11 o'clock. Well, you know, that's, okay, all right, you know, I just don't understand why I'm, you know, I can handle all this on my own. I'm, I can go in, I can come when I want to but no when daddy told you to be in at 11 you better be in at 11 that's because he loves you because if he if your father didn't care about you he wouldn't care what you did and see our heavenly father he cares about us if he didn't he wouldn't have sent Jesus 
That's worth repeating. If he didn't care about us, he wouldn't have sent Jesus. Over in the book of Luke, there's an account that's given. The book of Luke chapter 15. Of a father that had a couple boys. And this one decided that he had had enough of, if you will, working on the farm. He'd had all he wanted, and he was going out on his own. And he was going to make it happen. Let's kind of put it... We'll go to the Scripture here in just a moment. But let's kind of talk about this in today's terms. You're here, and you've decided that your dad, he, you know he's got a big farm. he got about 400 acres. 300 head of cow, a bunch of horses, four or five four-wheelers, a couple of nice pickup trucks, a couple of cab tractors with air in them. He's got it all. And here you are, you're out there working every day, and you ain't getting none of this. You know, got a nice room to stay in, three square meals, get to go to town, buy a couple of nice pairs of clothes, you know, you're doing all right, but... This ain't where it's at. Done heard that, you know, a couple of hours away from here, and go over there to New Orleans, and there's some things happening over there. And I've just had it. I'm going to Daddy. I'm going to say, give me what's mine. I'm out of here. So you pick up all of your toys and your goodies, and you, he gives you a truck. You throw them in the truck. You said, see you later, alligator. Case of raw, so raw, I ain't coming back. Got a pocket full of money, tank full of fuel, everything's good. And you roll up down there and hit Bourbon Street. Man, this is where it's at. It's happening right here. Things is going on right here. You go ahead and get your room down there. You got you one of them balconies, and you're overlooking the river down there. Parties every night. Everything's happening good. Next thing you know, in about a week, the money begins to kind of dwindle out. Well, you have to move out of the nice apartment, and then you, you're down to just a flat, stay in a little one-room flat. Well, still all right, still going and partying with everybody. I'm noticing the friends are beginning to dwindle away since they ain't got the big penthouse with a view. And all the drugs and the liquor, everything else that goes along. Well, then about two weeks, all the money's done gone, and you done carried, and you done sold the truck. Pick up a little bit more cash to get you through. Well, then the nice ring that Daddy gave me when I graduated high school, done went and pawned it. Before long, there ain't nothing left. And you find yourself downtown under the bridge. Going to the kitchen, just trying to get something to eat, and it hits you. One night, wondering if you're going to make it through to the next day. Just trying to get some rest because you're worried if somebody might come along and cut you while you're asleep. And you come to yourself and you say, at my dad's house, I had meals. He's even got folks that work for him. They've got a house. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to get me a ride back to daddy's house. And I'm going to tell him, Daddy, man, I have messed up big time. And I'm sorry. And I tell you what, Daddy, you don't have to take me back as a son. Just... Give me that room in the barn, and I'll be happy. I'll work for you. I'm going to tell you what the daddy's doing. My well, son's done been gone a month, and, you know, the cell phone was turned off after the first week because daddy was mad, and he went ahead and turned the phone off. And then son hocked the phone. So when he turned it back on, it wasn't working. Couldn't get a hold of him. 
I'm going to tell you what daddies do. They, they walk that floor. And if they love the Lord, they're on their knees before God praying every day. God, bring him back. Keep him saved. Keep him saved. And he looks down the road, that long driveway, hoping to see some dust. Maybe that truck. Or maybe just to see a silhouette of somebody walking. That son, he's done come to himself, and he knows. He knows that there's love at home. That next morning, Daddy gets up from praying. He walks on out and sits out on that porch, saying, God, I just don't understand. I don't understand why. Why won't he come home? Next thing he hears is the back door close. Walks inside. Son says, Dad, I've messed up. Oh, the dad didn't wait. Dad ran to him. Hugged him up. Said, man, I love you, son. I love you. I love you. And son said, wait a minute, daddy. I got to tell you something. I'll tell you something. He said, what is it? He said, I've messed up. Man, I've disgraced you, got mad at you, threw a fit. Threw a fit and gave me everything, and I blew it. Dad, just, just give me that room in the barn, and I'll work for you. I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And he says, Son, Daddy loves you. You're my son, and you've come home. I love you. You don't have to worry about paying me anything back. You're my son. That's a love. I want us to read this account. Beginning in verse 11 of chapter 15. This is Jesus speaking, and he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of the good that falls to me. So he divided them, them his livelihood. And not many days after that, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country, there he, where he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there rose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And then he went and he joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the field to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. No one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great ways off, but when he was still a great ways off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But Jesus, but the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe. And put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. Listen to me. For this my son was dead and is now alive again. He was lost and is found and they begin to be merry. I want to tell you that's the love that Jesus Christ has for you. That's what he has for you. See, he's not concerned about where you've been. He's concerned about where you're going. 
See, if you're running towards him and you cry out just like this son did, Father, I have sinned in your sight. Man, I have messed up. Would you forgive me? And what did he say he did? He forgave him and he put a robe on him. Oh, that's a sign of royalty. He put a ring on his finger. That meant he was sign of the family. Because when they sealed something, they sealed it with their ring. I want to tell you, he doesn't care where you've been. He cares where you're going. Young folks, he cares about you. You may not understand this love, but you don't have to understand it. You just need to accept it. You just need to accept it because he'll be the best friend you ever had. He won't turn his back on you. The Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. That just simply means to say he'll do what he said he'll do. And he'll stand with you. He's got a plan for your life. The book of Jeremiah says that he has plans to prosper us. That's not talking about money. That's talking about spiritually and living for him. He has plans to prosper us, not to harm us. He loves you. He loves you with everything. And right here tonight, let me tell you, he's standing on the porch. And he's looking. And he's looking to see who's going to run to him. And he's, his heart's beating for you. And see, when Jesus was on that cross and he cried out these precious words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, you can put your name right there if you don't know him as Lord and Savior. He cried your name because he cried out mine. He said, Father, forgive old David. He doesn't know what he's done to me. You can put your name there. See, tonight, I don't know where you're at in your walk with your Lord, with my Lord, with our God. But I know this very much because that's what the Bible says. He says, if you'll make a move towards him, he'll come to you. And you realize that you're lost and undone. See, I was nine when I realized it. And there's not a certain age that when it happens, it just you know it. Because the Holy Spirit convicts you and draws you. You say, well, what in the world is that? I want to tell you, that's that little, still, small voice that says, listen to me. Listen to me. Open up. I want to come in. And you know if he's knocking on your heart. See, I was raised hearing that knock. Well, Jesus knocks on your heartstrings. My friend, that Holy Spirit, once you accept Jesus, comes into your life, and he's just like a, a GPS. He begins to guide you if you'll listen. And God's word just begins to brighten the picture of where you're going. And that prayer life begins to strengthen all of that. And before long, there's a clear set path. And you begin to follow it because of all of those things that happen in your life. You see, that prodigal son, he came to himself. Don't wait until you've gone down that wrong road. Why not now? Why not now? Why not now let the Lord guide you every step of your way? See, he'll do it. Now see, on the other side of the fence over there, you know, Satan was over there and, and he, was, he was telling that old boy, hey, hang on. Man, come on now. It's going to be, get better. It's going to get better. Just hold on. You know, you might have to stay down here in this pig pen for just a little while. And a lot of people listen to Satan's tactics and ways. But oh, my friend, I want to tell you, don't listen to him. He's a liar. He's a thief. He'll steal and he'll rob from you. He'll rob your life. See, a life of sin a life of drugs, a life of alcohol, a life of sex will suck the life completely out of you because that's Satan's toys. That's what he wants. He wants it to look good. I want to tell you, you can turn on the TV and you can find all this great lifestyle that's out there and, 
And anytime you see good looking men and women, where are they at? They're in a beer commercial. Oh man, they look like they're having the best time. You ought to go behind the scene, pull the curtain back and watch what happens when the lights go off and the camera quits rolling. See, that's where the real's at. See, it's real in here tonight. It's real because of the love of Jesus. See, Jesus' love is the same on this side of the curtain as it is on this side. It's a never-ending. It's called agape love. It means all-encompassing love. It means it covers all. It, it wraps its arms around you. It embraces you. My Lord will be the daddy you may have never had. My Lord will be the mama that you may never have. Maybe the brother or the sister or the husband or the wife. I want to tell you, he's all. He is all. So tonight, where are you in your walk? Where are you in your relationship? Would you say that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ or are you still working on it? Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do better. Well, you know, I got some things and then, then I'm going to ask the Lord to save me. You know, I got to clean up some things in my life. Well, let me tell you, you can't clean a fish before you catch it. Jesus will be the clean up person in your life. He will clean you up. Why not tonight? Why not ask him to come in and save you? Don't wait until you're all the way down and then you're trying to look, look up saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And you cry out at that point. Don't go down that road. Why not just accept him? You know right now if he's dealing with you without a doubt. You know beyond a doubt if he's knocking on your heart saying, open up, let me come in. I want to save you. I'm here. Or maybe you're walking, you know, maybe, maybe like so many folks today that were saved at an early age and they've just drifted away from God. Why not be like David and stay restored to me the joy of my salvation? Lord, I've messed up. Forgive me. Forgive me that I sinned against you, God. See, this prodigal son story works that way too. He'll do just that. If you cry out to him and confess that you've done wrong, he'll forgive you. Why not tonight? Why not tonight? Where are you at in your walk? Have you ever asked the Lord to come into your life and be your personal Savior? You see, a relationship with Jesus Christ is personal. You see, my sin is not your sin and your sin is not my sin so it's something personal and once you get to know somebody then you begin a personal relationship with them and see I have a personal relationship with my wife because many years ago we began to, I called her on the phone and I asked her if she wanted to go out and we went to Pizza Hut and we begin to develop a relationship. We begin to talk back and forth. Then it began to evolve into more. The more that I talked to her, the more she talked to me. Then I found myself, the more that I wanted to talk to her, the more she wanted to talk to me because it became personal. My friend, have you ever asked Jesus to come into your life personally and save you? See, he wants to. And then you can develop a personal relationship with him. Well, how do you have that if he's not here? Oh, it's real easy. Studying his word, praying, fellowshipping with him, thanking him for what he does. Oh, it's easy to... Once you accept him.
Oh, no, it doesn't mean that the, the life walk is easy every day. Hey, life is still life. But my friend, he'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. That's what the Bible says. He'll put joy in your life. Man, when others are down and they look at you and they say, what in the world are you smiling about? Well, let me tell you, his name is Jesus. Why not tonight? Why not tonight? Why don't you ask him to come in and be your savior? He said he'll do just that. You see, if I could save you, I would, but I can't. I can just tell you about Jesus. It's only through him his blood that he shed on Calvary, that's what washes your sins away when you ask him to save you. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads right where you're at. And I want you to understand that Jesus can hear a whisper all the way to heaven from right where you're sitting. See, because he's looking at your heart. He's looking at your heart right now, and he knows your heart. So right where you're at, why don't you just pray to him and say, Lord, I'm ready. I, I know that you're knocking on my heart. Now, I'd be honored to lead you in a prayer, but me saying a prayer is not going to save you. It has to be you. You have to pray a prayer of faith, believing in your heart that Jesus Christ will save you. If you desire, you can pray with me. But you got to believe it in your heart and ask Him to come in and save you. If that's you tonight, why don't you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And I know that you died on a cross, Lord. And on the third day, you rose again. Lord Jesus, I've messed up. Lord, I've done some things that I'm ashamed of. Would you forgive me of my sin? Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving my soul. Now I want to live the rest of my life serving you and with your heads bowed and your eyes closed I want to ask you seriously no games about it but just seriously did you ask the Lord tonight to come into your life and to save your soul and you meant business and you're serious about it that you wanted him to save you that you wanted to go to heaven and be with him and not die and go to a devil's hell if you did I'll ask you to slip your hand up right where you're sitting that you asked the Lord to come into your life and to save you. You meant business with the Lord tonight that you asked the Lord to save your soul tonight. Okay? I'm going to ask you put your hand down. That you asked the Lord to save you. Now here's what I want you to do. If you raised your hand, I'm going to ask you to make your way up here to the altar. I'm going to be right down here. I want to pray with you. I want to share with you what God has done in your life. If you ask the Lord to save you, you come on right, right now. I'll meet you down here. His name is Jesus, the one who died. He saved my life and he gave me sight and he's coming back one day when that trumpet will blow this man who died will save your life and he will call you home. You may have problems, 
that you don't understand just come on the master and he'll come storm with his hand just fall on your face Cry out to him to help me through this man who died. Save your life and be right there for you. I want to tell you, Satan don't like this. He don't like it at all. He don't like it at all, but I, I'm going to tell you, I came here tonight expecting to see people saved. I want to tell you, Sunday morning when you come back here, you better expect somebody to get saved. Because the Lord said if we come expecting, and I believe with all of my heart, we can either reach out and get that blessing, or it's going to pass to somebody else. See, I see some smiles on some faces over here. And I know what God can do. I know what God can do. I know what He can do in folks' lives. And I'm thankful for a church. I'm going to tell you, there's a spirit that's in this church you don't find in a lot of churches. There's some things that goes on that I like. I like coming in and feeling love from folks. See, and that's what, that's what our Lord is about. I want to tell you, we've got a song, and I, I want us to do this song, and then Brother Toby, you come and whatever. Uh, hey, if there's still somebody else that's dealing with stuff, there's some, something going on in your life, we'd be honored. Hey, we're going to stay out there in the bus all night. If you want to stay in the altar all night, we'll stay in here with you and pray. Whatever it takes, that's what we want to do. And this song talks about that he's in control. See, these folks that accepted him as Lord tonight, guess what? He's in control now. He's in control of what's going on. So we want to sing this song for you. And it's what this song just simply says. He's in control. If you started a journey Down the long dusty road If your heart's been searching For a place to call home Sin and affliction you to green my friend be encouraged by these words that I
control If heartache and trouble It's all you know He said cut to your mess Has left you There's one who's waiting, waiting with his arms open wide. And he gently whispers, yeah, yeah, he, these words of Yeah. 